In this video, we're going to integrate Google Gemini 1.5 Flash or even Gemini Pro for free into Google Sheets using this script and the API that I'm going to give you. So with Gemini in Sheets, you're going to be able to do things like this. You're going to be able to call Gemini. In this instance, I'm using the code GM. You can change that, but for now, we'll leave it. We're going to ask it to give me a list of all the countries in South America, and it should easily and quickly create a list down of all the countries there. Now, since we've got all the countries, how about let's get quickly their capital cities. We're going to call it again using G using equals GM. We're going to put the prompt in within quotation marks and we're going to ask it to please return the capital city of the capital city name of this country. I've thought it also to only return the name. Sometimes it starts explaining the capital city of Argentina is when we don't want to do that, we want to get straight to the point in this case. Once we've done the prompt in uh, quotation marks, we're going to go the ambassand symbol, ambassand symbol, sorry, and then place the cell which contains the country in this sense, Argentina. And that prompt is going to know to reference Argentina in this instance, and it's got it right. That's Buenos Aires. We're going to go down very quickly here. And this is the magic of it that now we can do all of this in the one go. Perfect. So we've got La Paz, Brasilia, Santiago, Bogota, Georgetown, Quito, Lima. Perfect. It's doing everything right. Let's take it a step further and get all of their international airport names. Again, I'm just telling it to return only the city name. I'm going to go Ambersand and in this instance, Buenos Aires. I'm going to close that function with the brackets and go enter. Perfect. Now I've got Argentina's international airport name and I'm going to have all of South America's international cities airport name. Pretty good really quickly. Now, you might think this is silly, but it can actually really help your efficiency, particularly if you work with Google Gemini and Google Sheets. And at the end, I'm going to show you how you can make use it to create about 20 pieces of content in the one go, or at least the structure of that content that just facilitates your work, makes you more efficient and teaches you how to use these tools to make the most of it and make you more efficient. If that's something that you want to do, make sure you check out online community, the AI ranking hub, where we teach you and we support you in learning how to use all these AI tools to maximize your search engine optimization and to maximize your marketing as well with things like this, as well as cool automations that are AI powered. But we're going to get stuck into this right away. So why is this really good? Well, using the free tier of the API key usage that Google AI Studio allows us to use, we actually get free usage of these keys, which is quite amazing. And a lot of people don't know about this, but this makes it quite nice to be able to use these things completely for free so we can test it out. They use the free tier to be able to train their models. So you have to have that in an understanding that they will use the data that you use this stuff for. But we get 15 requests per minute, 15, uh, 1 million tokens per minute, and then 1,500 requests per day, which for the most part is more than enough for pretty much everyone that's using these applications like this. You need a couple of things to be able to get this though. One is you need an account on Google AI Studio, and I'll leave links to this below in the video description. And also you need an account in Google Cloud, the console cloud for the developers in Google. So the first thing you're going to go and do is get an account on Google AI Studio. I'll give you the link below. Once you do that, you're going to go to get an API key. And if you create an API key, you're not going to have any at the bottom here, by the way, but you are not going to have a Google Cloud project, which is what you need in order to get an API key. And this is where people say, yeah, it gets too complicated. But trust me, for free usage of one of the best language models, it's great. So you want this, right? What we're going to do is we're going to go to our Google Cloud Developer Console. I'll leave a link to this below. It's really easy to make an account. You don't need to be a developer by any stretch of the imagination. What you're going to go is once you've created an account, is you're going to make sure that you're in the Cloud Console. I'll make sure that I'll leave a link to this and it's going to look like this for you. You can try the model and everything like that. It's a good thing for you to learn how to do if you're interested in AI tools. You're going to go up here and we're going to go to create a new project. We're going to call this YouTube video example, and we're going to leave all the organization settings and location settings as it is. You will have to create all this stuff, but it's really easy to do. It's a step-by-step -step guide that they provide you. I'm going to create. Cool. Now we're viewing this project, and there's one more thing you need to do. You need to allow the capability for this project to access the Gemini language model. So once the project is created, we're going to select the project. 
and you can see you're in the right project because it's up here youtube video example perfect we're going to go to quick access here api and services you're going to go to library and we're going to search for gemini and there is the gemini for the cloud and gemini api i think i need to actually access all of them yeah build with gemini 1.5 flash perfect i'm going to enable that one and that just means you kind of telling Google developers that you want that part of their technology stack into this project to be able to access that. Perfect. So now I've got the Google Gemini API within that project. And that's really all you need because now once we go back to Google AI Studio, which you'll have access to, and it's quite easy to get into, you're going to go and create an API key. And if I look now on my search cloud projects, I should see my new cloud project here youtube video example i click that and i'm going to create an existing a key an existing project and i'm going to copy that key save that somewhere because that'll be the last time you'll be able to see it don't try to use that api key because i'm going to delete it as soon as i finish with this video but i'm going to copy that key and now i can nearly get started i'm going to go to a new google sheets brand new and I'm going to go to extensions and go to app script. If you've never played around with app script, it's actually a very useful tool to be able to do a lot of automations within Google Sheets and even Google Docs. You're going to delete the code that's in there. We don't need that. And you're going to copy and you're going to copy all this code that I'll leave in the video description below. I'll leave access to that. It might be a text file. I'm not quite sure yet, but it'll be accessible for free. And I'm going to go back to the I'm going to go back to my app script here and paste that here. The only difference for you is that when it says Gemini API key, it'll say put your Gemini API key here. That's what you need to do. So I'm going to paste by. So in that section, I'm going to paste my API key and I'm going to save it. But now I go back to my Google Sheet and I need to refresh it. And before I refresh it, keep an eye out right next to help. Something up here will come up in a second. I'm going to refresh it and it'll come up here, Gemini. Perfect. You don't need to do anything, create a list or anything like that. I've just added some functionalities that allows it to create a list in a new cell instead of having everything clustered. So what kind of things can we do this, particularly for our content generation or SEO? or whatever else. Now, if you use Google Sheets a lot, then this is opening up for a lot of different things that you can become a lot more efficient at now. But you call the Gemini function now by doing GM, sorry, by doing equals GM. You see that it'll come up here and it'll tell you that that's available. Gonna hit enter. And you need the double quotation marks to place your prompt in there. So let's do something different as opposed to the beginning of the video. Let's say, give me a list of 20 frequently asked questions about training German Shepherds. Let's say I have a dog training business. I've got the question finished here with the quotation marks, and then I'm going to finish that function with, I'm going to finish that function with a closing bracket and hit enter. So the code that I've provided for you for free has the functionality for it to also access all the other cells. Otherwise it would be bundled up all in one cell and it's just not really that good. And you see here that it's actually given me a little bit more than just the FAQs. So um, that's really my own fault. You need to really prompt Gemini correctly. So I'm going to add here in the one prompt, just give me the questions. That way there shouldn't be any confusion about that. Okay, perfect. Now I've just got the questions. How do I start training my German Shepherd puppy? What are the most important commands to teach German Shepherd and things like that. Now, are these the most frequently asked questions in Google search? Probably, but we don't know for sure. You can always verify that doing a quick search, but this is not the type of video for that. I just want to give you the idea that this really can be amazing for creating those types of content ideas and getting those creative juices flowing. So what can I do next? Well, I have those FAQs, so maybe I can create a structure for the blog that answers that question. Let's do that now. So I've said using, I've said using the following question, create a blog outline that will answer that question in detail. And then I'm going to go and use the ampersand symbol, select the question here, make sure that it's closed the function with a closing bracket. I'm not sure if that's called a bracket. I'm not sure, but somebody will probably comment down below perfect and now i've got a structure here that's uh, been actually my fault i've selected the wrong cell that needs to be the 
here, B3, not D3. That's why the answer was a little bit off. And while we're at it, I'm just going to make sure that this is structured a little bit better. And I'm going to go, so now this makes a little bit of sense. So already for the blog post, how do I start training my German Shepherd puppy? The blog outline is that, and it gives you an introduction, you know, a section two, three, four, five. Great. So I've already got a few frequently asked questions about how to train in all the questions about how to train a German Shepherd. Now we can move this a little bit further down. Now, be careful. Remember, we've got a limit to how many times we can call this per minute. So if you go and create and drop all the creation of the blog structure in the one go, you might get an error limit message, but it's no problems. You just wait a little bit and you drag it down again to another three or four and it should be fine because we've got, you know, a lot of calls per day. Perfect. You see, I got that error here and that's fine. We just go to delete that. We copy the prompt from the other one and we place, place it here and in a second, it'll be up. Okay, so now let's go through this quickly. So now I've got about 20 questions and I've got 20 blog outlines for that. And that usually would take me a lot, but that's done it very, very quickly, which is kind of nice. So what do I do with this now? Is this ready to be published? Can I just give it to GPT and publish it? Well, depends. If you're the industry expert, I would say you write this out and add your experience. That's what's really going to separate your content from other content. But let's do that really quickly, right? Let's go through and use GPT Canvas, which if you've got access to, fantastic. If you don't have access to that, because that's just in the premium version at the moment, I've done a video of an open source version of GPT Canvas that you can use. Leave that linked in the video description as well. But let's grab the first blog post here. Let's grab the content and we're going to go to GPT. We're going to make sure that we've got Canvas GPT 4.0 with Canvas selected. You don't have to do this, but I don't mind writing with GPT 4.0 Canvas. And I'm going to say, using the following blog outline, generate the entire blog post. And now because I'm using 4.0 Canvas, I can have a much more collaborative approach into rewriting this blog post. Great. And now I can go and, you know, if I'm happy with a section, I can make that longer, make that shorter. I can change the edits, adjust the length, the reading level. Uh, let's keep it a little bit more simple. Oh, no, let's leave the length right. Reading level, high school, middle school. I like that. And now the idea here is for you to add your experience into the blog post. This is what's going to really separate this blog post from all the other stuff and AI generated content that's out there. Now, I understand this is AI generated, but just to be clear, because inevitably someone will ask me in the comments, Google doesn't care how the content is generated, whether that's with AI or just with your organic fingers. <laughs> what matters is the quality of the blog post. And if you're answering the user search intent, so we're answering the user search intent because well, we're answering question, but now it's about you adding your experience in there. And if you want to know how to write a high quality blog post using Foro Canvas, I've also done a very detailed video on how to do that. It'll give you the images. It'll do some backlinking as well for you. I'll leave that in the video descriptions below. But my whole idea here was to give you a tool that by the way, is free that you can use within Google Sheets. You can also use other things. You can also utilize this for other things, like for example, responding to a lot of reviews or classifying text or whatever that is. It's essentially Gemini Flash 1.5 Flash, which is one of the smartest models out there, by the way, within Google Sheets. And you don't have to pay for the Google Gemini in work, which I think is an extra 20 or $30 a month. You can just do it for free by creating yourself a developer account and you don't need to be a developer. I hope this was useful. Let me know if you wanna see these types of videos. And if you really want to explore how to maximize your search engine optimization, helping you rank number one on Google, getting you more organic traffic and sales, I suggest you check out our online community, the AI Ranking Hub. I'll leave links to this below. There's a free, there's a free version and a premium version. So you can start off with a free version, get your toes wet. And if you really like it, you can come join us in the premium version that has a lot more support. We have a 24 uh, seven SEO support manager. We have two weekly meetings. We have a lot more stuff there. It's a lot of fun. I'll leave links to that. And if you want to see other videos like this, if you want to see me integrate other language models into Google Sheet, because that's your preference, maybe Claude or something else, just leave it in the comments below and I'll make that for you. Cheers. Thanks for watching.